you doing, everyone? Welcome to broadcast. It is Monday night. It's nine o'clock. I hope you're absolutely amazing. I'm Billy Kirkwood. Uh, first of all, before we get things kicked off, we've got a brilliant guest for you tonight. Before we get things rocking, if you know anyone that's going to be of interest in this, let's get this shared. Let's get this liked. Let's get this out there. So if you've got just five seconds, hit that share button. We're going to try and get as many people watching as we can. Right, and don't forget to check out everything that's going on over at broadbuildoils.com. We have got some amazing products that are going to be coming in, and the pre-orders are up for some of the new shirts that are coming out for the summer, so make sure to check them out as well as those Net Gators or Snoodies or whatever we're calling them. Make sure to check them out. All right, uh, I hope you had a great weekend. It's a Monday. But don't worry about that. The weekend is not too far away. Let's get things rocking. Our guest tonight is road racer Jamie Coward. Let's get the questions in for him. If you have any questions, then please boop, hit us in the comments to come straight through to me. I'll read them out. Indeed, you've got questions about anything. Uh, hit us up. I can already see some questions coming in for Jamie. So that's cracking. Right. Uh, without further ado, let's welcome our special guest on the show tonight. Please uh, welcome Jamie Coward. Jamie, how the devil are you, mate? Oh, I don't appear to be able to hear you, Jamie. Hang on one second. Oh, sorry. One minute. Hey, there you go. There we go mate. Got you sorted. Got you sorted. Uh, how you doing? Did I catch you having a wee sneaky vape? Yeah. Sorry, mate. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, thing is, how are you tonight, pal? Yeah, I'm good, sir. Yeah, spot on. Just uh, kids are in bed and just uh, all settling down to watch a movie, but be asked to come on here for John. So, yeah, I'm chuffed to bits. It's nice. All right. Well, I'll not keep you too long. I know any chance to get to watch something that is not kid related, particularly during lockdown, is precious to me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what, what, what are they? Is it Pepper Pig? Oh, yeah, horrendous. Like, I know we could swear on here, so I. Fucking hate Pepper Pig. <laughs> I'll level with you. I am not a violent man, but if Pepper Pig were a real wee girl, I'd kick her <laughs> right in the fanny and I would not <laughs> think twice. Strangle her. <laughs> Daddy Always, always fat shaming Daddy Pig and giving Mummy Pig a hard time. Carry stand it. Carry stand it. Uh, right. Uh, before we get things rocking, man, uh, I've got to ask with it being locked down, are you getting plenty of chance to go out on the bike? Uh, no, it's obviously the uh, the racing scene's obviously shut down because obviously the with this uh, virus it's about so yeah. it's a bit of a shame. But I've been lucky, really. My boss, I work as a I'm a builder by trade, so my boss has kept me in work for since it started. Really, so he's got a couple of houses that I've been working on, so we've been up there and then we're working on sites yeah. occasionally. But work at uh, people's houses, just re like doing the gardens and stuff. So we've been quite lucky. So I've been just keeping busy doing that. So it's been quite good. And obviously the, with the kids and then keeping fit as much as I can so it's uh yeah it's, it's been it's been a bit of a, an experience I suppose we're on but it's uh it's been I've been lucky I suppose as well we're keeping busy definitely definitely right well before we get things rocking uh if anyone has any questions uh make sure to file them on just quick it's nice and easy just put it in the comments it'll come straight through to me and we'll get things rocking right we've got to kick off Jamie where is it you're from originally I am from Hebden Bridge and I still live in Hebden Bridge nice. just outside of Halifax all right, okay. I don't, I don't oh, yeah, know. Yeah, it's a uh, little, little village in the uh, in the Yorkshire Dales, we say. It's uh, oh, like a lovely little spot full of lesbians, actually, if you like lesbians. <laughs> I don't, I'm a fan of their work, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Not the sort of lesbians you see in them, them naughty movies, anyway. Oh, all Big right, hairy okay. ones. <laughs> and <bald. laughs> uh, uh, All right, mate, I've got, I've got to ask, what's it like growing up there, then? What's it like growing up there? Uh, an experience. Should we say, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's been it's nice because obviously it's there's a lot to do with in with being in the Dales. It's uh, they say we can go out walking and cycling and doing all sorts, causing havoc and setting fires and stuff like that in woods and stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been nice. It's nice actually. It's been really nice. I had a group of lads that we used to knock about with when we were younger, and it were just good fun, you know. So yeah, nice looking back. I, w I went down. To see my dad where I used to live and stuff like that, and it's just nice re re reminiscing is a word, isn't it? Back on what yeah. we used to do, causing trouble with your mates and stuff. So yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's a lovely spot, really. So I've got to I've got to ask, how did you get into how did you get into bikes? I mean, was it something that kind of started off at, in in school, or or was it something that came a wee bit later? It's a, uh, a family thing, really. My dad, my right. dad. Our uh, when I was younger, I just. We used to go racing every weekend with my father and my mum and my sister. So we used to just uh, go to school or whatever. Dad used to go to work when we used to go to work. And we used to come come home on a Friday night, load the van up and off we went racing. So it's just something I've always remembered and always uh, wanted to do when I've been growing up, you know. So it's it's come from my dad, really, and my dad's family and stuff like that, that sort of background. They're all into oh. their own mad keen on bikes and stuff, you know. So. Oh, brilliant. So they were always into bikes? Yeah, my dad and my granddad were 
not so much into bikes, but cars, and then my uncle Joseph as well. He were into bikes, right. and so it's just it's just come from there. I suppose it's a bit blood really, blood blood related, should we say? But yeah, I just just travel around with my dad. I just you just watch, and it's just it's just like yeah, I want to do that when I get older. And luckily enough, now I'm uh, I'm doing it, so it's good. That's very cool. That's very. When do you think that also sort of kicked in? Because you go from like you know watching TV and playing football. When do you think it really started? Like I really. I really like this. This isn't because sometimes when your dad does something and it just seems so normal to you. But when does it get to the point where you're like, "I'm, I'm really into this. I'm really into this." Uh, well, my dad tried to get me on bikes as much as I could, and it just, just the the adrenaline and the thrill of I was like, must have been maybe seven or six or eight or seven or eight, something like that, when I when wow. I got on the first bike or whatever. So quite young, and then at first, obviously, it's a bit frightening, but you just the the emotions and stuff you get from riding a motorcycle. It's uh. It's just something to behold, you know, and, and what we do or, or what I do with the road racing, it's it's unbelievable, really. You know, it's just uh, it's when you think about it and sit back and think about and look what you've done and what you've, what you what you actually are doing. It's it's crazy, really. That's fair. Well, we've already got a couple of questions and a couple of comments. And first of all, Jamie, I get the feeling you might know some of these people. Uh, we've got Sophie Senior saying, telling you to behave yourself. That's my uh, message. Uh, I thought that I thought that might be uh, and then straight after it we hear of Tim Parker does Jimmy like lesbians well you've already answered that question it's not how I saw it's not how I saw this done. oh god there's my friend Mary Elaine watching from Shetland hi Mary Elaine uh, she, I don't know if they have bikes in Shetland I do apologise uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> probably do probably do uh, right and Andy's got a great question for you uh, Jimmy when did you realise you wanted to race professionally because you said you loved bikes. You loved the adrenaline. Was it was it a hobby first? Was it a hobby yeah. first? Yeah, it were it were a bit of a hobby first. You know, it just uh, I left school and got myself a job and I got a bike and then it was more just we just on a week and had a bit of fun. But then I realised I were quite good at it or half decent, should we say? So I uh, yeah, we just just kept going and kept going and kept going. And luckily, I've, on along the way, I picked up sponsors and people that give me bikes to ride and we've got good results. And I just really not spiral out of control but it's just been just a slow process and we get to really at the top of the pinnacle of sport now actually i'm not professional just yet but it's nice to be professional if i could you know so still working yeah. but it's uh it's just some it's uh yeah it's just i just it's just i just do this i just love it it's amazing so for people that don't know we had a little chat just before we came on uh road racing because i was unsure of exactly how to describe it as what you do because all the research and all the videos they a lot of them seem to contradict each other. What is what is road racing? It's hard, it's hard to really explain. It's it's obviously it's, it's road racing is virtually it's where it, in simple terms is they literally close the main roads, public roads, and just let us hooligans go race around. That's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, when you think about it like that, you know, you know there's no there is protection there, but it's you're flying past houses and walls and trees and bushes and stuff like that, and it's a uh, it's bonkers, really, when you sit back and, like I said before, when you think about it, but it's uh, phenomenal when you're doing it and when you get so that what, sort of buzz. So what speeds are we talking here in terms of going on these public roads? I mean, they're, they're closed and they're safe for the public. But what speeds are we talking here? Because this isn't like a straight track. This isn't like a, a, an oval track or a unity no. track or anything like that. You guys are taking some... I mean, I, I watched a couple of videos of the Isle of Man and I've gigged in the Isle of Man and it's a it's the road system there is interesting and i don't mean any disrespect to anybody for the island man that might be watching matt the speeds you're going at i mean what what exactly are we talking when you're on a race full pelt going around these kind of roads uh the isle of man the lap record around the isle of man this is an, an average speed is by a man called peter hickman or a lad called peter hickman and the, his average speed over 37 and three quarter miles is 135 mile an hour 135.4 mile an hour Average speed over 35, uh, 37 and three quarter mile. Bloody hell! And your and your top speeds are uh, so be straight. You're probably touching. I think someone got caught down there about two hundred mile an hour at yeah. the northwest, which is another road racing island. It's uh, I think it was Michael Rutter or uh, uh, who's the guy Je uh, Martin Jessup got clocked at two hundred and seven mile an hour. So it's uh, you're going fairly fast. Holy crap! And even though these are like, I mean, these are these are public roads that you would see around yeah. around a town, and some of them are obviously like country. Like, it reminded me some of the stuff I saw reminded me a little bit of rally. Uh, yeah, but that's that's actually, a layman like me, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. But it's like so. It's just for bikes. Obviously, it's not as narrow and technical. It's not as narrow and as uh, it's it's not it's not dangerous. It's not as dangerous in the world. But it's just not as narrow. And it's just yeah. It's unless you're 
if, if people are watching it, I've never seen it before, just go onto YouTube later on after we finish this podcast and then we can yeah. just look at, just type in Isle of Man TT and that's the, that is the pinnacle of road racing and that, that you'll get the, the idea from that. But you were saying it's not just uh, in, in the UK, it's even, where, where else have you, well, you've raced in it, I know you haven't gone to Europe yet, but um, where else in the UK have you taken part in these races? Uh, they do it in Ireland. Uh, right. There's a Northwest 200 and there's the uh, Ulster Grand Prix, which is the bigger ones. And they have little not Irish national road races like the Tangredy, Cookstown 100. There's loads of little ones dotted around uh, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. But they also race in uh, road race in Europe as well. I went in 2018 with a Pins 13 team and we raced at, uh, in Finland at a place called Imartra, which used to be a Grand Prix uh, event back in the day. Right. Uh, went to Czech Republic, Belgium, uh, Germany. Went all over the place, really. It's it's a uh, quite a big. It's it's like I said. It's like I said to you before. It's a bit of a bespoke sport. It's only people that really are into bikes madly that, that know about it, really. But a lot of people that are into bikes like watch MotoGP and World Superbikes and stuff, you know. Which is yeah. On it's broadcast a lot on like big big things on like obviously Sky and BT and blah blah blah. So, but this is the it's, if unless you're really into it really really keenly, it's uh, something you don't really hear about. Yeah. Do you th- is there a lot of crossover between the sort of MotoGP and is there, a lot, is there a lot of crossover in terms of the fan base or do you reckon it's quite segregated? Is it quite specific? I don't know. It's a, diff- it's a difficult question. I can't I can't really answer it. I I, there probably is people, obviously, people that like bikes, obviously like watching bikes and love, like seeing it. So there will be yeah. some people, but I think fan base is probably, like for MotoGP, might not get the fact that we like us, people like wearing racing around and putting ourselves at risk of obviously getting injured or maybe maybe dying you know it's it's i know it's not nice to say that but that's, that could happen you know so yeah whereas the motor gp is a lot safer you know so if someone falls off there they fall over and roll around in some kit later and get back up and they go back out on the back end later on you know but with us it's, it's a risky take you know but it's just the buzz you get from it and just it's just something else it was it was hard pounding stuff when I was watching the, the stuff earlier. I was really taken aback because I know Moto GP stuff, but I really it's hard pounding yeah. stuff even to watch. Yeah, it's like, uh, like I said, for people that, that have never heard of it before are watching, just like I said, going to YouTube tonight when we finish this and then uh, just type in the Alaman TT and you would get the exactly what it is from that virtually. It's just literally real racing bikes on uh, public roads. Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, listen, uh, I just want to say we've got over 120 people watching. Fantastic. Tell you what, if you have any questions for Jamie, don't be shy. Stick them in the comments. It could be anything at all in regards to his career. Uh, but I think we've had enough lesbians. But if you've got any questions about anything, uh, file them in the comments. Uh, we'll have a chat for you. I've got a couple of people giving me a hard time about Peppa Pig, but I stand by every word. Uh, right. Uh, got a lot of... Got a lot of love being shown here. Uh, first of all, uh, let's see Janice Thompson, Paul Jordan. Uh, they're very excited to have you on. That's nice to hear. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, lots of people asked. Lots Paul of people Jordan's asking. Paul Jordan's the lad that races. That he, uh, he races with us. So he'll be trying well, to rip into the cover. Well, it seems to be. Uh, uh, let's see, Janice. Uh, apparently, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a rivalry between me and Paul over Janice's number one fan, uh, fan to us here. So, sounds Can't like be- a one minute. Sounds like a one, mate. Well done. Well done. Hopefully. Paul won't like that. <laughs> uh, right, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, uh, let's get them out very, very quickly, um, and then we'll go into some more other general career questions. This one's quite good. Uh, where's the best place you love to ride or race? Uh, yeah, the Isle of Man TT, like I said before, is the pinnacle of road racing. So it's the you get there, you you, the only way to get there with your, your vehicles is obviously you can fly there, but the only way to get there is on the boat. So you get on the boat in Hersham or Liverpool and you're chugging yeah. across the sea and then you, you can see it and it's just the feeling when you get there and the whole atmosphere of the place and you just just something else, you know. So that's probably the, the best place I like to race or ride. Uh, it's uh, it's Madison Square. It's Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Madison Square that's Garden. It for road racing, people that love road racing, it's just the pinnacle. And it's like I said, it's Madison Square Garden for road racing. Love it, love it. Well, I've got, I've got to ask you, uh, first of all, we've got a couple of questions coming in, but I've got to ask you this. So when is when do you make the first transition? What What's the, the first race? Because uh, here we're saying it's, uh, uh, I don't I hate using the phrase hobby. You're kind of developing your taste yeah. and, your, and your talent and your skill and going into it. When does it become that you're making the jump from being, what's the way I've got to put in this, be, be, going from the B track to the A track, so to speak? What's, what's the first big race to you talk us through that what, what was that like my my first big race in, in my career 
Yes, sir. You mean it's uh, <clears throat> our racing? Obviously, if you start off as a as a, as a novice and work your way through and do have to do short circuit circuit race meetings and work your way up to get your right license and blah blah blah. But once you get that, uh, <clears throat> I used to go with my dad to a place or in the Isle of Man called the uh, Southern Hundred, which is a little race on the Isle of, on the Isle of Man, and it's uh, only four point two five miles, something like that. Yeah. And uh, my dad used to go there quite a lot, and uh, that's where I went to, and tried my first ever road race and. From coming from the like the short circuits to the road race and the the buzz and the feeling I got from that it's just something else. Yeah. So yeah. That, that will make that will like the, the transition from being a short circuit or short circuit race into road racing, you know. So it's that would that were it. And it just as soon as, as soon as I did that, as soon as I went a couple of laps on there, it was just like, well, we need to just carry on doing this. This is amazing. <laughs> I tell you, you got burnt by the bug. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. Uh, and how did your dad feel about this? I mean, you said you came from, I use the phrase petrol heads, but you came from a, uh, a sort of generation of folk going into the cars, the bikes. Yeah. What, what does dad think of this? Uh, I don't, I can't really say. I don't, I'm not too, I'm not too sure. I don't, if it, I think at first he liked the idea of me racing bikes, but now it's got to the stage where we're competing and we're going, well, I'm not comp- I'm competing when I was down there, but I mean, you get into a stage where you, you're pushing boundaries and limits and, Obviously, people like my girlfriend and my mum and other people that know me well that obviously worry about you, but it's just something that you just can't get out of. I just I don't think I'll ever stop doing it until I can't do it anymore. All right, okay. Uh, uh, although we had a, a random question here. Uh, of, oh, this is more of a, a general question. Uh, this is Stephen Barber. Uh, I think he's getting introduced for it for the first time, or he's aware of it. I think I saw somewhere here he'd love to go. Uh, well, in fact, here's Stephen's original statement. We'll read that first. Uh, it's bloody scary to watch. Can't imagine what it's like to race, especially the Iron Man TT. Uh, he's asking a question. So this is for anyone that's maybe coming to this for the first time. Um, how many how many laps is the Isle of Man? There's a uh, there's there's a uh, the senior race, which is like the pinnacle of the, the TT itself. Is the it's six laps, six lap race over uh, obviously thirty seven and three quarter miles. So it's Whatever that is, hundred over hundred fifty miles. It's like two hour race. You have a little, you have a pit stop on lap two and four. So you have to come into on the start on the Glen Country Road, oh. on the public road. They have like a, a pit stop, so you come into there and you refuel and you get going again. So the TT, the one, there's one race. It's the senior. It's six laps. Uh, they have different categories. So there's super sports four laps, side cars three laps, there's super twin or lightweights four laps. So it's they're long, they're long races. You know, you go, you look, watch MotoGP and they race for. They do 27 laps, but they only, they only race for 35 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever, 45, yeah, 45 yeah. minutes-ish. But we go and for six laps, you're, you're doing 130 mile an hour average speeds and uh, you're racing for like an hour and 50 minutes nearly, or something like an hour, hour and 40 minutes. So it's 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 crazy, really, and it's mind, it's mind-boggling, really. Yeah. We do, more, we do probably more mileage on bike at the TT fortnight. We practice and race laps than any other event or world championship in, in the world. Wow. And uh, is there is there much of an international call for that? Because I, I know you've said it's in the UK, it's in Europe. Is this something that's made its way over to like to the United States or elsewhere in the world, or is it really a, yeah. a European only thing? Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a couple of lads, a lad called Mark Miller that comes. He came over from America and he actually won the they had obviously the zero the electric uh, electric bike. So that he, the first ever race he actually won that. So it's, it's in America now. People are coming over from America to it. People, I think there's a man from Canada or a lad that comes from Canada to do it as well, from Spain. They come from everywhere now to race at the TT. So like it's, it's a, it's really, really. Once you look into it, it's a really massive. It's a massive uh, thing, but it's uh, unless you don't really know much about it and yeah. you're not really into that sort of thing, you can't. Uh, it's uh, one of them sort of things. Where it's like a bit of sport, really. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That it's uh, that's awesome. That it's like it's the, the, the Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it's it's yeah. coming here. Because uh, you know. think about people from they're traveling from America all the way to England and across to a little tiny island, island in, the, in the middle of in the middle of the sea between Ireland and England to race. You know, it's crazy. That's cool. That's very cool. Uh, all right. Uh, well, we've got uh, a couple of questions, but before we do that, uh, if you do have any questions for Jamie, make sure to get them in. This is a man that's got a night out. He's got his, he's got his kids in bed. Let's not hold him away from his Monday night movie. Let's get some <laughs> cracking questions in before we finish up. Uh, and just quickly, don't forget to check everything out at broadbeardoils.com. Some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, in fact, I got I got to ask about that. Uh, how did you get in, uh, involved with uh, with John? Because I know sponsorship in sports, particularly motorsports. Um, it can be, it can be a sort of up and down kind of a thing. How did you get involved with John? Pestered him to death. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I think at first, obviously, John will correct me if I'm wrong, but we were race at, uh, there's a race, we do a race, road race in uh, Scarborough, in uh, a place called Oliver's Mount, which is just on the hill outside Scarborough. There's a little road race there. And we were yeah. there racing, obviously, myself and Lee. Uh, John sponsored another rider called Lee Johnson. So we were, he were there watching Lee, and then he were obviously walking around the paddock and we just started having a bit of a chat and with his dad were there and his dad's absolutely bonkers. So I had a chat with him and it was a good laugh. So, uh, and then we just spiraled out of control from there, really. He just said he liked to help us out and I pissed him and pissed him and pissed him and he helped out some more. And it's uh, it's just come from there, really. It's just, uh, I just really like him and his family. His, his dad is, like I said, he's bonkers and it's a proper family run business. And I like to help people out and promote people where I can, you know, so it's uh, it just, just worked out really well. Yeah, yeah, it just seems like it's a, it's a, well, he's enthusiastic about this as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, but well, in fact, uh, so enthusiastic, he's got a question for you. Uh, where is your favourite place on the TT circuit to watch? Uh, looking for suggestions. That's from John himself. Uh, yeah. Gorsley, which is like a, just, it's about, about six, seven mile into the into the track, it's uh, really like fast. You can like lay on the bank at the side of the track and it whiz past you and you can feel them brush past you. And it's like top gear, right hand, you're absolutely flat out through there. That's amazing to watch from there. I watched there when my, my dad was racing, obviously, and stuff. So that's amazing. And there's uh, it's a few other places that are a bit bespoke that not many people go to. You know, it's bottom of Bagara where you come in, you come down there off the top of Bagara, over a bit, do a bit of wheeling down the hill into like a bit of like a bomb hole, really. You, you jump into there and there's a lot of people watch there. That's quite good. This, 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 the whole the, anywhere on the Isle of Man watching the bikes is just a, for, just amazing, you know, because you're doing the speed you're doing and the commitment you got to to get around there. It's just watching it anywhere is just like I said, it just boggles it boggles my mind when I watched it and when I do it, it's, uh, it's just a different thing again. Now, uh, as in terms of someone that was want to look to get into the sport and it's endurance and it's physical, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, what advice would you give someone at an early stage? that is maybe looking to develop an interest in this or maybe looking to get into the sport at some point? Because it's not like an overnight thing. Uh, what what would be, what, what advice would you give them? It's, it's uh, obviously, be, you have to be committed to the to the job for a start. Of course, it's it's a long process when you start, if you've got no licence or anything, racing licence, because you've got to go for like a bit of a three-year period with the ACU or whatever governing body you, you're with in, or from Ireland or whatever. So, it's like that's a three-year period and it's quite cost effective because the club race meetings it's quite expensive and yeah it's you've got to do that and you've got to get to the tt you've got to do so much and it's, it's a big thing but it's if, it, if you're determined enough to do it and you're committed enough to do it you can like i said anything's possible so if you want to do it it's, it's, it's there to be had and it's it, you won't forget if you want to do it and you won't uh what's the word you won't uh regret doing it if you if you get to that, that stage yeah. you know so you got you got to put in the time. You got to put in the time. Yeah, it's, really, it's, really it's want the it. I say it's just it's just commitment more than anything. Like I said, I were yeah. I was seventeen when I started, and my first wage I got from working were just went straight into a bike, and I had nothing else there for my dinner for next week. So I wanted a bike, so much to go racing, you know. So it's it's it's, 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 like said, it's just commitment and just determination really to get to it. And luckily enough, like I said, I've got to a, a decent stage in my career, and it's uh it's it's it's. Like I said to get now where I am now, it's just amazing. Right. Well, we, we've got to ask you about this. So, what, what's your what's what's the sort of plans for the future just now? I mean, obviously, lockdowns affecting us all, but slowly but surely, there's whispers about sports coming back and is yeah. being able to look at these things. And I, I, I mean, I would say that the TT in theory could be one of the sports that might be one, you know, one of the early ones to come back. People can watch from a safe distance and yeah. uh, and what have you. So, uh, but then again, I'm not prime minister and I'm not first <laughs> minister or whatever. <laughs> well, it's yeah, I think I would actually, but it's, I think a pair of us together, mate. We've got a circuit yeah, up for Scotland, you oh, yeah. um, But in terms of the sport coming back, what would what is um, what's your plans for the future? What, uh, what do you aspire to do with this sport in the future? Uh, I want to, I want to say, like I've won a, I've won a TT race. I've, I've, I won a, is a, a thing that runs alongside the TT called the Classic TT, which used to be, or it still is, the Manx Grand Prix. But uh, I actually won the Classic TT last year, which were amazing. Because so obviously, it's the, to win around the Isle of Man and to race there for initially at the TT is just something else. Then to actually race there and win, it's something else. But I want to, I, I want to win at the Isle of Man TT races itself, the, the the pinnacle of the sport. If I can win there, then that that is my uh, that is my dream. I just want to win one race around there. 
Uh, all right, well, we got, we got, so we got a couple of... So both of us with 1.2 seconds off or something. It was ridiculous. Do you know, I didn't want to bring it up, mate, but when I had a dinner we about research earlier, I thought I thought I was wrong and I had to ask my mate she, uh, Seamus, uh, yeah. have I got this marking wrong? And he went, no, it was tight. He's a big, one point, he, yeah, one point two he's seconds. A, he's a big fan and he's watching. Yeah. Uh, so he's he's marking out. Uh, good on you, Seamus. Uh, he'll be so fucking embarrassed that I brought that up. Uh, <laughs> in fact, in fact, there's we just got a message from. Him. So, uh, cool. Uh, well, we got, we're gonna ask this before we get into the last couple of uh, questions. Uh, if you do have any more questions, don't miss it. Now's your last chance. Uh, let's get some more questions in for uh, Jamie. Uh, and very, very quickly, Jamie, before we get on this last batch of questions, I've got to ask you, uh, in terms of using the Brobier product, I see you've got one of the snap bags on. That's good to see. Uh, <laughs> Do you use any of the Brobier products yourself? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what, uh, what's your obviously with the uh, with the training and stuff, uh, I do quite a lot of cycling and running and stuff, and I'm just trying to keep as fit as possible for the racing. It's uh, I bath, I bath quite a lot, and John's got like a bath salts that I use to help relax it's, the muscles and stuff like that. It's Unbelievable. amazing. It's yeah. amazing stuff. I use that. I use that a hell of a lot. So uh, probably twice a week or whatever, and having baths just to uh, reduce the soreness of the muscles and just relax myself, you know. So yeah. And also, I like the uh, the beard butter, the cocoa. Is it the cocoa? The chocolate orange beard butter. Oh God, yes. Love that. So I, I always use that if I can. Do you know to something? Fair, I've actually, run out. I don't know if John's watching or not. <laughs> Could we some sending in the post? <laughs> We're not saying anything, John, but uh, <laughs> uh, you, John, you know full well uh, Jamie is persistent, so <laughs> I, will, I, will leave, is the word. I will leave that there. Uh, right, let's we'll get a couple of these. Like, uh, probably, probably will any minute now. It's, it's an interesting way for me to hand him a P45, I guess, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm mad. You know, right, let's... <laughs> right, let's get a couple of uh, questions in. Actually, Stephen Barber's put a lot of questions here. Horrid questions, don't want to jinx anything. But what's the worst injury you've had racing? I'm sure everyone's thought about it at some point. Like you say, um, what any bad injuries or any knocks, fingers crossed, that is not the case. But anything that you've went, that was a nasty one and recovered from a course. Yeah, I had a massive one. Uh, 2000 and I can't remember the year. I think it must have been 2000. 13 or 14, I think. Yeah. I played a little Irish road race meeting uh, called Tangredy 100. I had a, a massive crash and I broke my leg in about 12 places, I think it was. I had one of them lizard off frames on the other halo frames. You see people walk around with them. I had one of them on and then I had uh, I dislocated my arm quite badly. I can't straighten my arm anymore. So, yeah, I'd, that were a really big and I had to have a year out. And, yeah, it were horrendous, to be honest. It's about better. That's that's a long rehab as well with an injury to your arm. So, uh, yeah. but but fingers crossed, we're going to be back soon. So that, that's always good. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the question, Stephen. I absolutely built her. Uh, got a couple more in here. Uh, first of all, here's one, uh, Derek Senior. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your favourite bike you'd like to ride uh, around the TT course? Uh, it's a team called Padgett's. That uh, the, probably if people like obviously like the racing and they uh, they'll know about them. Uh, Clive Paget runs a team and he runs a a YZ. Oh, it's a five hundred two stroke Grand Prix bike, ex Grand Prix bike that uh, Connor Cummings rode last couple of years and Bruce Anderson rode it before. So I'd uh, I'd love to uh, love to have a go on that. Just an, it's an absolute animal. It's just a bike that I used to watch when I was on, on watch TV on TV when I was younger. Kevin right. Swans and people like them riding him and it was just one of them bikes that you just love to have a go on. Uh, right, let's got a couple more here. Uh, oh god, they're coming in quick and fast. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum, go to this next one. Uh, oh, it's an interesting one. Uh, I know it's a, a, a stand up, I've certainly got some, but Jamie, any superstitions or rituals before going out? Dump. I mean, a good, good, hefty shot. I, I, li I like your style. I like your style. I love a dump, lightens the load as well, and it makes me faster. Oh, for some man. reason, I don't know why, but I always have a dump. No, there's no right with that. No, why, well, why when, I, I do. when I do stand up, I always have a pre show yeah. shit. Uh, <laughs> I say nervous, nervous and shit. I, and I always make sure to find the technician and go, do not start the show. <laughs> without, <laughs> do not start the show. Uh, right, a uh, couple more here. Uh, let's uh, uh, crack up. Mark Gibson's asking, Jimmy, what was your favorite race from 2019? Oh, there were loads. We had a really good year last year. There were quite a few different races. Well, give us a couple of your oh. favorites, man. Yeah. Uh, my first, I had my first ever TT podium, obviously, about losing out by 1.2 seconds. I, again, 
I yeah, mentioned it, but it's uh, yeah, that were I know I didn't win, but it were just an amazing race. And then this they were Northwest 200 on the Super Twin. We had a good race there. But the same again at Northwest. We had a race on the 600 with uh, David Todd and uh, Ian Hutchison. That were a phenomenal race. And the uh, there's been so many good races. 700 as well. I had a couple of good races with Dean Harrison there, and that were good on the 600. So yeah, just uh, that last 2019, they, they, I think every race we competed in, we did really well. So it were. Uh, a bit of a highlight and the, the, the standout ones like i said the, the tt podium the first ever tt podium just missing out again 1.2 seconds <laughs> yeah i mentioned 1.2 but it's out on my forehead john if you're watching we've got to get a beard oil that is 1.2 1.2 seconds, seconds yeah <laughs> 1.2 seconds uh right we've got a, a couple more in here this one's amanda kennedy if cookston 100 goes ahead in uh, september will you be over uh it's a difficult one so obviously the teams I ride for, one of them is based on the Isle of Man. So it's mm. a different governing body and they're not being a lot stricter than they are over in here while we're, we're in, where we are now in England and Scotland. So it's the lockdown thing over there is they're all clear now. So I think they're waiting for us to get sorted, which is going to be a long process. So yeah, he can't get off the island. And if he does come off the island, then he's got to go. When he goes back, he's got to quarantine for 14 days. So it's it's a long process just to go race in Ireland. I'd love to go and race there, but it's... Uh, yeah. Just the 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 uh, just the logistics of it aren't, aren't right good, but it's, I might go across with the I ride for a team up Scotland KHS and their uh, KHS racing there. Uh, like I said they could go across because it's yeah it's, that might be possible, but it's just a long way to go with one bike, and you know so yeah, yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit of a shame, but it's just unless it gets locked, this lockdown it gets uh, or it goes it, the virus starts going away and I... off as, as such, we probably won't be there, but it's just one of the things. It's like a, it's like a legit. You just can't answer questions in that time frame no. just now, isn't it? It's, it's just no, it's a complete difficult. nightmare. Uh, all right, uh, let's get uh, um, uh, another question. And Stephen Barber's coming on the fast. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> is there a good pool of young riders coming through to the race, uh, TT, in the future? Is the sport growing? Uh, yeah, there is. There's, there's, people, there's people popping up all the time. You know, it's, yeah. like I said, this last couple of years, there's a lad called David Todd. That's like come come up the ranks really quick and uh yeah there's there's quite a lot of people i'm still quite young i'm 29 yeah. so, so i'm fairly young so i could be one of them people as well but he's there's obviously paul jordan as well he's he obviously flashed up before he's a good lad from yeah. ireland he's only 28 he says he's 28 but i think he's really 34 but uh isn't he never changes his age he's always 28 every year uh oh i see one of them <laughs> right but he's uh yeah he's uh yeah he's, he's, he's quite a big group of people he's it's it's, it's uh it's difficult a task because it's it's a, it's a long story, but it's not a long story, but it's a difficult task because there's, there's not many teams around and it's difficult to. Yeah. But there is a lot of young people coming up and wanting to do it, so yeah, it's 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 not it's not it's not dying away. It's probably growing more than anything. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, uh, well, of course, like we said, uh, if you get an opportunity, uh, anyone watching us, go and check out. Our, like seriously, I spent I waste I don't waste the afternoon, but I spent the afternoon watching a lot of videos and getting the fear. To be honest, uh, <laughs> yeah, the field, to be honest, uh, look, uh, we're, I know that uh, John's very excited about when everything opens up and stuff, what have you. Thank you for joining us on the show, and uh, hopefully the sponsorship continues, and hopefully we'll get you topped up with some uh, uh, chocolate orange. Yes. Well. Yeah, that'd be nice, John. Uh, all you. right, uh, give me one second, Jimmy. I'm just going to put you back in the green room and I'll get this uh, wrapped up. All right, just hang on there for me a second, mate. Uh, all right, well, that's all we've got time for in this week's broadcast. Don't forget uh, to check out everything at broadbeardoils.com, all the new products and all the news and what have you over at Broadbeard Oils on Facebook. Right, uh, we're going to be back next Monday at 9 o'clock. We'll put up all the details. Uh, of course, it's going to be in the social media. And all that's left to say is look after yourselves. I'll be Billy. We'll see you later. Cheers. And uh, now I need to do the bit, which I never do slightly, and that's sign off. Bye.